Hi everyone. Uh, it's been a little bit of time. Some different things have happened. Um, and I've been just processing a bunch of stuff, uh, like the rest of humanity, I guess. Um, and I decided, uh, people were talking about this week and, you know, I, I wanted to open up the records of this week on planet earth and see what is shared with us. So if you're new to my channel, I open up the Akashic records of things, uh, which are, uh, energy or vibrational historic, um, spaces, um, it's usually not a divination space, but I was just kind of curious, like, what do we need to know about this week? Uh, so I've opened up the Akash of, uh, this week on planet earth. So I'm just going to ask what we need to know. I mean, I can feel my feet tingling right now and I'm a clear audience channel. I'm not really hearing much. So let me. So I'm hearing that I need that. I basically need to push anything out of my uh, energetic space that has a preconceived um, idea. So I'm being told whatever is transfold will ever whatever will unfold on the planet um, this week. It's really important to notice your breath and to be really in, in your breath this week and your body. So the focusing on your breath keeps you in your body. And that's the way we experience everything is through our body. So that's, this is, I'm, I'm just telling you what I'm hearing. Uh, if you're new to my channel, I, um, again, I go into the, uh, this, these energy fields. And so I'm just asking, what do we need to know about pl from the Akash of planet earth? this week. So it's really going to be important to stay grounded. It's really ideal if you can connect with the earth a lot this week. We're going to really feel the connection with the earth um, the, and, and realize how connected we are to the earth and how supportive of supportive we are of the earth. And as we feel tension and things in our body, it's important to figure out the best ways to release that for ourselves. Um, there are so many techniques out there that if you go into a quiet space and connect in with more of who you are, which is mostly energy, then you will be guided beautifully to what serves you best. <laughs> and they're saying, don't forget to, to take your favorite crystal in your house. Um, and just, uh, spend some time with it um and let it love on you and let it remind you of your essence your crystalline essence um which is connected to everything and they're telling me that it's important to remember that we all have choices in coming here to this planet um and it, that includes when we leave. So even though we find it very hard to say goodbye to the physical people that we love, um, it doesn't mean that it's an actual goodbye. It's a goodbye to the body. Um, 
but not to their soul essence and their energy. Um, and I'm just telling you what I'm hearing, right? So like they say that there's studies out there that when um, you weigh the body before it actually dies or releases its last breath, um, you will see that uh, the body when they weigh it is lighter after death. So, uh, so what, so what is that? Is that energy? And, and what really is the word energy? Um, soul? You know, these are things that, you know, I don't want to give you an idea or a belief to hold on to. You can form your own beliefs around these different things. But I believe that we are energy mostly and um, that when we pass, um, that life never ceases, that that energy continues. Um, and then the big question is what, how does it continue and what does that look like? Um, so I'm being told that I should share a short story with you. My dad uh, transitioned his body on August the 5th. And uh, within a few days of that, I saw this big dove in the backyard and uh, a gray dove. And I had never seen a big gray dove here before. And I have different birds in the backyard and a hummingbird feeder and things like that. I love that. I love feeling connected in nature. Uh, so I assumed it was my dad. Um, and when I... Um, was talking to a friend of mine who's an animal communicator because the dove came back a couple days later. I saw it and I saw it like go from the ground up into a tree, flying back and forth, like almost frantically. And I realized it was trying to get my attention. Um, and I asked, so I went, so I had told her about that. And I said, I think it was my dad trying to like touch base with me. And so she's very intuitive. And so she was like, um, Maybe you should ask it what the message is, because it obviously has a message for you. So I went in the backyard, and I actually didn't see a dove, but I could hear a dove, which was kind of cool. And so I just said, what is the message for me? And I was sitting there with my eyes closed, and I heard that peace and freedom are now yours. And so I understood that message. Um, and... I think that uh, we all should, uh, I think I'm being told that uh, to t share that story with you because that's another way for you to connect in and remember that we're all connected with nature and that uh, especially with animals, you can always ask, you know, what the message is. Or if you see something, um, you know, some people will say like, that, you know, they they'll see a feather and we automatic, a lot of people automatically associate the feather with angels but it's also a kind of a message right and we we i mean i personally or if i see the numbers you know one 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 or three 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 or you know sequences of certain numbers then i think that that is my um higher self or non-physical aspects uh reminding me of that connection but i always don't think to ask is there a message and I think when you're in a receptive space, I think it's really good to ask, you know, what's the message here? Uh, so I think that's the purpose of that story to tell you that. Um, so I'm hearing that there may be some uh, things that come forward this week that... Um, or in the next couple of weeks that might make you rethink a bunch of stuff. And, but it may not, <laughs> uh, because we're all like creating. Right. And so, yeah, so they're encouraging me to tell you like to find your happy place, um, and try to, uh, move through the world that way from your happy place, you know, seeing the light in other people shining your light, um, uh, the message is very strongly like there is no end game, right? We all think there's some sort of end game. And even with some of my projects, I'm like, I want to manifest this project now, you know? <laughs> and it's like, 
You know, it's like, do you really want to manifest it right now? Or do you want to have a really great time in the creation of that project, right? And the collective and the people that you're meeting and pulling together to, as part of your team or your family or whatever, right? So uh, there is no end game, you know. Uh, uh, living in the moment is uh, the most powerful place that you can exist. So... That's what I'm going to wish you today. Uh, I'm just going to ask one more time what else we need to know. I'm just hearing out of chaos comes a uh, more permanent change. So let's trust that. Let's trust how we're guided, how we know how much we're loved and supported and how we know that our soul energy continues to go on when we um, transition the body. Um, and that with uh, the space of crystalline energy reminding us of all that, uh, we can actually uh, draw on that remembrance to connect with people that we love who have transitioned their body. So I'll leave you with that. Um, Blessings, peace, love, freedom um, to you all. Uh, may you feel that uh, love every day that surrounds you and supports you and guides you. Take care.